Yeah, obviously this is the first time that it's uh, me, Caleb, and Austin. We're the seniors in the room. Uh, so there's a sense of urgency that we have as leaders uh, to kind of, you know, pick everyone else up in the group. And I think we have a very mature group. Uh, you know, we have young guys, we have old guys, but we know uh, the job that we have to do. And I think we've done a great job executing it. We practice at a, a very high level during the week. And I think that goes to show how much work Coach Woods puts, puts into special teams as well as Coach Ferentz. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very serious deal here. We preach offense, defense, as well as special teams. It's not just a sore subject that we just kind of hit on once a week. Uh, we, we take a lot of focus into special teams, and you know, I think that's, you know, why we've been successful in the field. Um, but yeah, you know, field goal kicking is, uh, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. So making the most of your opportunity, um, you know, that that's obviously the end, the end goal. You want to make the most of your, of your opportunity, try to make every kick, but put your team in the best position as possible. And that's kind of what we do in the special shifts room. We're gonna play all way, we're gonna play fast, physical, and together, and we're gonna show them what we made of. Y'all ready? Let's go, ready? Let's go. Let's go, family on three. One, two, three. Family. You gotta play their asses off. Do that, and it's gonna be a good day. Nothing left. Let's go. Let's go. Iowa, Illinois has a special ring to it, and the Hawks hope they're ring their bell this afternoon and get their seventh consecutive win over the Illini. I was one eleven of the last 12. Welcome back to Champaign-Urbana, everybody. Great often with Ed Podolak. The Heartland is brought to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Peters retreating from center. Angles one to the sideline, and it is caught. A heck of a catch. Brandon Peters changes the play. Here's the snap from center. Back to pass, straight back to pass. Fires over the middle, caught, touchdown. Right down the seam to a wide open. Daniel Barker, the tight end, and Illinois makes it look easy on their first possession. And it's already 7-0. They're going to try and run it out of there, and nothing doing. He's got two by two receiver formation. One running back. He's straight back to pass. Throws it to the underneath man, Brown. And Davion Nixon said, get out of my front yard, please. <laughs> Down he goes for a loss. Peters. When's he going to put it up? Right now. Play fake. Lobs caught inside the 15. On a deep slant, great hands, so they have a first down. Another play fake, they're going back at him. He makes the catch. Was he in the end zone? Makes the catch. He did get the foot down, and Illinois extends the lead to 14 to nothing. We weren't expecting this. Illinois backed up to its own 13, but Peters has been spectacular at quarterback here in the first half. They're going to run wide. Van Valkenburg sniffed it all the way, and he drops Reggie Love for a big loss. Well, when the defense needed a hard starter, too, and that is a great one. He has been unstoppable this year when he can read the play. Van Valkenburg is just in the backfield so fast. Couple receivers, couple tight ends. Who's Spencer going to pick out? Throws, caught, first down. Amir Smith-Marset inside the 25. Amir still going. He scrums his way to the 22. Big play on fourth down. Play action over the middle, caught wide. Open is Laporta. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown. That's a brand new Spencer Petrus we looked at on that series, Edward. Yeah, well, that was beautiful. And they got him with the draw fake. Those linebackers crashing again toward the line of scrimmage. And there was separation underneath the safety. Threw it right on time, right to the right target. Momentum shifting here in favor of the Hawkeyes. See if Spencer Petrus can put two scoring drives together back to back. Roll out left. Throws has a man open. Brandon Smith, first down, still on his feet. Illinois 41 yard line. The Hawks are in Illinois territory. Still plenty of time. 446 to go. Big hole up the middle. Goodson still running. 30 yard line. First down. This will come from 40. 
And he's got the wind at his back. Here's the spot by Gersande, and the kick is right down central. Three points for the Hawkeyes. It's a 14 to 10 Illinois lead. Three wideouts, a slot to the wide side. They run the same play with Chase Brown, and waiting for him was Joe Evans. He ran right into Joe Evans with help from Golston. They knock him down for little or no gain. Here's a pass caught at the Illinois 25. Down the near seam to Sam Laporta. When in doubt, go to the Iowa tight ends. Spencer looks down the middle of the field. Fires that way, has a man open. Sean Byers inside the five. It'll be first and goal with 32 seconds to play in the first half. Well, it's third and goal, 24 seconds to go till halftime. Hawks have one more shot at six. Petrus gets to the outside and threw it away. Now it's a 27-yard field goal attempt by Duncan. Here is the snap and the spot, and it's good. With 14 seconds to go till intermission. 14-13, Illinois' lead is one. The Heartland is brought to you by Hy-Vee, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Hy-Vee proudly supports the Iowa Hawkeyes. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. We gotta play hard as hell, and we gotta be determined. All right, determined. Thirty minutes together, all we got. Let's go. Let's go. Third down and long from the 25 of Illinois. Peters back to pass. Good protection. Fires from the sideline. Nearly picked off. Oh, Dane Belton had it figured all the way. And Petrus up under center. Linda Bond. Play fake to Goodson, rolls out, throws a naked screen to Amir. He's got the first down, Illinois 40-yard line. Tight end, Laporta goes in motion, one running back. Mackay Sargent's in the game. Illinois blitzes, and that leaves a, an open receiver. Brandon Smith free for the first down inside the Illinois 20. Twin receivers to the right. One, Regani comes in motion. They run the other way to Sargent. Well-designed play. He gets around the right end, gets eight on first down. Here's Petrus to throw to the underneath man for a catch, and it's Laporta. Then his favorite target today from the 11-yard line. He's inside the five. Just a quick slot slant, and the Hawkeyes down one, but not for long. Petrus is really going at fast forward. Here's Samir Smith-Marset as he walks across the goal line for a touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Iowa has the lead. And we're going for two. Well, and they probably should hit, huh? Yeah. Up 19-14. Petrus back to pass. Plenty of time. Throws it. Caught. And into the end zone for the conversion is who else? Tyler Goodson. He's been muddy all year. Boy, we saw about everything in that drive, didn't we? And, uh, you know, you talk about high-powered offense. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Right back. Right back. Right back. I'm almost like punching on the swing. Big play for the Iowa defense. He's got four wideouts in the formation. He's looking to the wide side of the field, steps up in the pocket, and down he goes. Chauncey Golston got there first. Evans and Davion Nixon got in there as well. Uh, it just collapsed on him. Quarterback had no chance. Here comes the punt, and it's headed toward midfield. Fielded by Charlie Jones on the bounce. 35, 40, 35, 30, excuse me, and out of bounds at the 30. So the Hawks with a great opportunity here. Oh, and a big hole off the right side. There goes Goodson. He's inside the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Laporta in motion. One tailback, that's Goodson. One running back is Goodson. Good protection. Here's a lob to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown. A fade pattern and a beautiful throw by Spencer Petrus. What a throw. Come on. Here he is. Williams back to pass. Lobs to the end zone. It is incomplete. Terrific play by Kayvon Merriweather. Hawks look at second down 10 just across the 20 yard line. Here's Ivory Kelly Martin trying to get to the, uh, nope, they ran a reverse, and Amir Smith is down the near sideline. He's got one guy to beat, and quite, can't quite get it done, but that's okay. He crossed midfield. He, he faked the handoff to Ivory Kelly, who was going one way. He and Amir Smith almost collided. 
But a good job. How, how good is Goodson at handing off the football? They're telling the D-line to take the rest of the night off. Here comes uh, Tyrone Tracy. He's through the gap. Down the far sideline. Oh, they say he stepped out of bounds. I thought he ran out of that tackle, didn't you? Here are the Hawks. They're running a sideways play again, and it might go for a touchdown. Amir Smith-Marset hits the pylon. Touchdown, Iowa. Touchdown, Iowa. Exclamation mark. Yes, That's a way to stay with it, way to keep pressing. Uh, let's get our rest, okay? Let's make sure we're ready to go for next week. One last game, right? One last game, then we'll see what the hell happens. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. Growing up, uh, I played about every sport you can imagine. Um, soccer, baseball, tennis, swimming. Uh, football is just another one of the sports I wanted to play. Um, so, I, you know, I play football, but I played every position you can imagine. Um, but kicking was something my dad did grow, or growing up. He actually went to Iowa State in the late 80s and kicked for them for four years. So that was something he just taught me how to do because he knew how important it was. So, you know, with a soccer background, I kind of picked up quickly on it. And then that kind of sparked and grew into what is now a, a career for me. So getting into football, I was playing soccer growing up my entire life. I played soccer and baseball. Um, and then one of my buddies who actually played at Boise State and then transferred to Duquesne to be a cornerback. His dad was super big into football in Texas, and we didn't have a kicker at the time in middle school, so he uh, kind of recruited me a little bit to come kick in middle school. He, uh, he brought me into his house, had this big slideshow of, uh, of like why we need a kicker, why they're so important. So I was like, yeah, I'll try it out, um, and ended up loving it. So I ended up quitting soccer and focused on football, and yeah, I, I got, uh, kind of got lucky coming to Iowa. Uh, we had, it was one of my high school games, we were playing Charlotte Christian. Uh, fun fact, Steph Curry went there, but we, we were playing them. Um, their athletic director at the time was a former kicker for the Panthers, and Jason Baker happened to be like really good friends with them. Obviously, he punted with the Panthers, and I had a good game, and he kind of, uh, you know, texted Baker and said, hey, you should check this guy out from uh, North Carolina, and I, I got to walk on here. It was a great opportunity. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I've loved it so far. I think there's definitely a little added pressure being a senior, knowing you guys look up to you, and you know, for Iowa to be or any team to be successful, you know, you need your leaders and your oldest players to be playing their best football. So you, you know, in the off season or in practices, you know, if we're going to have a good team, if we're going to have a good practice, we need to be performing at our best. So I think that kind of adds the pressure, and you know, your future is relying more and more on what you do now. So it's kind of that just adds to it, but. Still makes it. It's still an incredibly fun experience, and being around all these coaches and players is the best decision of my life. And had a lot of fun with it. So um, I've kind of learned from a lot of great leaders. You know, like Keith, he's a great leader. I learn a lot from him. But we, you know, we want to be able to help the younger guys grow as not just players, but as people, because we know the success of this program in the future relies on them knowing, you know, how to be a great, how to be a great man, a great player, a great team, and a great person, so they can be, you know, a great father. I think that's or a great brother. Or, um, whatever it may be, I think being a good leader for them, a good example, will help them grow as people, and I think that's what's important as a leader, and that's the kind of legacy Keith and I would like to leave. Yeah, being a finalist for the Groza Award was obviously a, a great honor. Um, it was really cool to have Nate Kading present the award, and we were in Florida in Palm Beach. Uh, Brad Banks was the keynote speaker for that banquet, and you know it, it was really cool to hear experiences from those guys, former uh, Iowa Hawkeyes, I, I, you know, I've barely uh, met, but you know, they're, they're great. Um, I've always had great interactions with them and they're, you know, it's a very family, family oriented here uh, at the University of Iowa, which is great. Um, yeah, going through the process, again, extremely honored. Um, have, have had a great, you know, support staff and a lot of people who have helped me get to that spot um, in my career. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun um, going from Florida to Atlanta um, then Connecticut um, for the Walter Camp All-American um, Banquet. That was great. Being in the bus with, it's like Joe Burrow, Jonathan Taylor, Derek Brown, like all those guys. I'm like, what am I doing here? Like I felt a little out of place. 
especially when they're you know a foot taller than me and 150 pounds heavier um but you know just actually seeing them you know in, in person you know being able to talk to them about their different experiences was really cool um obviously didn't come away with the hardware um but but you know having that trophy wouldn't have changed a make or miss during that season so at the end of the day it you know it was it was a great experience uh, great to be you know mentioned in, in that group um, and it was a lot of fun the heartland is brought to you by iowa's corn farmers of the iowa corn growers association and iowa corn promotion board you may think iowa grows corn but the truth is corn grows iowa Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. Basically just a four vertical concept going on and uh, she kept it up the outside seam and Spence put a good ball only where I could catch it and made a good play on it, so. Good protection. Here's a lob to the end zone. It is caught for a touchdown. Touchdown Iowa, a fade pattern and a beautiful throw by Spencer Petrus. Yeah, it was exciting. <laughs> it was a long time coming, so um, it was definitely a good feeling, and hope to, hopefully we can get a couple more. Play action over the middle, caught wide, open is Laporta, touchdown Iowa, touchdown! He caught that ball like kind of right in front of me and dove in the end zone. I think he actually thought I, I was coming to tackle him because <laughs> he couldn't really see me, so that's why he dove, but uh, yeah, definitely very exciting for both of us. Uh, the first one, uh, we knew we was going to get man coverage, uh, so uh, it was simple. Once he motioned with him, we knew for sure it was man-to-man -man coverage. All we had to do was make sure Laporta, you know, seal the block. Our, his man would run with him, and with my speed, it would get on the edge and just try to get there quick, quick as I can with the ball and get it in the end zone. Here's Amir Smith-Marset as he oh. walks across the goal line for a touchdown, Iowa. And then my second touchdown, man-to-man uh, -man coverage again. There should be nobody else left for me, and all I got to do is get around the edge and uh, put it in the end zone. So uh, I stretched out. They was coming. I stretched the ball out. You know, luckily I stayed, stayed, kept the ball in my hand and uh, put it in the end zone. Here are the Hawks. They're running a sideways play again, and it might go for a touchdown. Amir smith Marset hits the pylon. Touchdown, Iowa! <laughs> touchdown, Iowa! Exclamation mark. Game, set, match. And the Hawks are going to be 5-2, five and two, five straight wins, three of those on the road. Same thing we've been doing. Uh, we got to get off to a fast start, though. Uh, start the game with a... A good tempo, good speed, uh, executing, you know, from the start. You know, Wisconsin, they don't really hurt themselves, so we got to be able to go out there, play our game, but execute from the gate, and then, you know, just put it on them early, just go down, score points, and then just keep the ball rolling, uh, put the ball in, you know, playmaker's hands, and just continue to do what we do best and, you know, go out there and fight hard each and every week. Um, I think we got to start fast. That's a big thing. Um, but just just be physical and uh, you know out, out play them. I think that's all we need to do, and we'll come out with a win. This week's Heart of the Hawkeyes feature comes from North Liberty with avid Hawk fan Josh Yelick. Josh has attended 118 consecutive Iowa football games. He graduated from the University of Iowa in 2008. As most sports fans do, Josh and his tailgating buddies have a superstitious tradition that stems from an Iowa win as the underdogs. That game, they smoked a cow's tongue at the tailgate, and with a Hawkeye win, this sparked a tradition that would continue until today for a little extra luck. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.